All right, so it's been a while since I've actually done a metal album review, and that's going to change today. Well, I also haven't really looked at a lot of uh, metal bands on this uh, podcast overall, but we're, today we're going to look at Six Feet Under's Undead album, which is actually great. Uh, I really liked it. Undead is the ninth studio album by American death metal band Six Feet Under. The album was released on May 22nd, 2020, or not 2020, but 2012. Um, <laughs> I, I'm so used to saying like 2020 or 20 something like that. But uh, this was out in 2012 through Metal Blade Records. And so here is the... Uh, track list you've got titles like frozen at the moment of death formaldehyde 18 days molest dead blood on my hands missing victims reckless near-death experience delayed combustion at device the scar vampire apocalypse and the depths of depravity so that last title reminds me of a band name that i came up with which is like the the uh the Johnny Depps of Depravity, the Brad Pitt of Despair, and uh, what was the other one? I can't remember the other name, but it was it was like taking all these like Hollywood hunks and, you know, s pairing their names together with some unfortunate fate like that. But anyway, the uh, personnel of Six Feet Under includes Chris Barnes on vocals, Steve Swanson on lead guitar. Rob Arnold on rhythm, guitar, and bass, and Kevin Talley or Tolly on drums. Not really sure how that is pronounced, but I, you know, I did my best to, uh, you know, try to meet both criteria of likely pronunciations. So you've got Tally and Tolly. So, you, so you can't really like go after me too much for that one. So this obviously features. 11 tracks of heavy, groove-oriented death metal with lyrics that focus on horror and the macabre. Well, based on those track titles, who would have guessed, right? The, although it would be kind of funny if you had song titles like that and all the songs were like about sunshine and flowers and puppy dogs and lollipops and stuff like that. But no, not in this case. You 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 really do know what to expect going into, going into this. I must admit I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this album, especially when almost all I ever hear about Six Feet Under is people trash-talking them. Like, if if you were to look up a YouTube video, I, it seems like a lot of the time it's somebody going after Chris Barnes, um, like, saying he's not that great of a vocalist, or, you know, his lyrics, or yada yada. You know, people like to complain but really, this album subverted all of that for me. You know, it's a pretty stellar album. I really thought it was much better than anticipated. And it's it's not that my musical tastes follow popular opinion, but I was I was actually expecting to agree and like say, ah, oh, this album, you know, it's all right, maybe, but. But, you know, I wasn't expecting this album to be as good as it was. I think this definitely deserves repeated listens. And, uh, you know, a lot of the times when I look at music for this podcast, I it, it'll just be like a one and done kind of thing, if I'm being honest. But this I probably will genuinely uh, listen to every so often because it's, it's definitely a good album. Uh, some of the obvious strengths... Of this album is, you know, Chris Barnes, actually, the off, the often dissed vocalist. And you've got the guitar work by, you know, the two guitarists that I mentioned already. And, uh, you know, the. Uh, let's see, the uh, guitarist and the bassist. Rob Arnold, he, he uh, first joined the band for this album. You know, he didn't appear on previous albums by six feet under Barnes has described the album as a return to the band's roots 
where they focus on the raw aggression and intensity of their earlier work. But to me, what's important is just that the album sounds pretty much like death metal at its best. And, you know, I'm not the biggest metalhead on the planet or possibly even in my tiny little city. And I'm certainly not the biggest death metal head. But I, I got into this like I've been a death metal aficionado all along, basically. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to describe it because I don't want to build the album up too much. But, you know, I, I like this album. Undead surely received mixed reviews from critics and fans, with some praising the band's return to form, and probably others criticizing the lack of innovation or evolution in their sound. You know, that's really the standard critique, especially for metal music. You know, the band hasn't evolved, they haven't changed enough, or, you know, the sound isn't varied enough. But for me, this album does have some varied sounds on it. I think it really uh, shows some range, even though the lyrics don't really have that. You kind of know what to expect, but you know, in terms of the uh, the uh, delivery of the instrumentation, I suppose you might say. Well, you know, th there are a few, there are a few parts that might even surprise you. I'll just put it that way. I'm not sure if the album appeared on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart, but it's a hit with me. At the risk of sounding like I am overpraising it again, you know. Um, this is definitely not going to be the best review. Because I'm, you know, I'm just like screwing around here. Just talking about how good the album is. But, you know, I am going to say what the notable tracks from the album are, according to me. So there's Formaldehyde, good track. 18 Days, not to be confused with a song by Saving Abel. Six Feet Under's 18 Days has a great bouncy feel to it, like a giant ball of bloody, writhing, electrified worms, bouncing at you to crush you like a steamroller wrecking ball and maybe incorporate your stinking corpse into the teeming mass so you could end up being like some garbled human mess, <laughs> you know, as it bounces along to find its next victim or something like that. That's that's what I thought of that song. So the next song is Molest Dead. It's a cheerful song about, you guessed it, necrophilia. With its catchy line, out drains your blood in buckets. That definitely reminds me of Dexter, especially season one. And if you haven't watched that, you know, may, maybe, maybe go ahead and check that season out. Dexter is definitely a morbid show. Very death metal in its uh, storylines in many cases. And, uh, you know, Blood on My Hands, another track from this album, has a really cool riff that's, on the, that's mostly on the higher register. And if you don't play a musical instrument, when I say a higher register, that just means it's not a bassier part, but, you know, on the higher strings. Um, it also really liked delayed combustion device especially a certain part that starts at around one minute and 32 seconds in where chris barnes is kind of like a doing a whisper thing and it's nice and creepy <laughs> so it's it's fun the album does not feature any cover of acdc songs which six feet under is sort of notorious for but i have to say their version of back in black which i understand has become a staple of their live shows is either intentionally or unintentionally pretty funny. And I'm sorry if Chris Barnes catches wind of this comment. You know, uh, I mean funny in a good way. Don't come after me with the chainsaw, all right? So, uh, you know, there are lyrics about death, mutilation, blistering, bleeding, oozing pus, and, and all that fun stuff. The band is actually still active in recent years releasing albums like Crypt of the Devil and Graveyard Classics 4, or IV if you want to get into the Roman numerals. And that one, that part four is also called The Number of the Priest. So those were released in 2014 and 2016. They've also got like a newer album even after that. Personally, if I, if I was more into death metal, if I was like in a death metal band, 
I would release an album titled It Only Hurts When I Laugh, and I'd have an image of someone laughing while their intestines ooze out of their mouth or something like that. I'm sure it would receive widespread critical acclaim, though some critics might be polarized about whether the album cover is a sensitive depiction of intestinal vomiting, which is probably a real condition that should be addressed delicately. You know, you don't want to offend people when you're uh, depicting guts oozing out of mouths and stuff like that. So in, in, imbued with an undeniably metal palette, Six Feet Under's album has a clear identity. You know, there's no no real uh, diverse set of themes here other than, you know, just whatever is macabre. You know, there's no love ballad or anything like that. Undead more than makes up for any of the band's previous shortcomings by not only fulfilling the original Six Feet Under sound, but also expanding on it in several ways. Granted, in some ways, Chris Barnes isn't as much of a risk taker lyrically as someone like Serge Tankian from System of a Down, whose songs are structurally and lyrically difficult to predict. But Six Feet Under is predictable in a good way on this album. And like I said, there's, there's enough variation to keep it fresh and to keep it interesting and really to encourage you to follow along. And, uh, you know, go ahead and check out their lyrics. You might be, you might be grossed out. <laughs> go ahead and do that if you, if you want to uh, be like, oh, wow, okay. So uh, with the instrumentation of uh, guitarist and bassist Rob Arnold added into this fresh festival of decay of sound, you've got an album that fractures and delivers. And this album, which again is titled Undead, was followed by another album called Unborn, which I believe came out the very next year. So um, I don't know if I'm going to be checking that out, but possibly. Well, I, f I do feel like I've talked about this long enough, so I'm just going to, you know, end it here. So have a good day. And, uh, you know, don't let the man with the chainsaw come after you because I don't think he's just going to give it to you as a as a little welcoming gift. He's going to lodge it inside your skull. You know, some people learn that lesson uh, the hard way.